A 32-year-old private pilot flew with three companions to a mountain resort for a weekend of skiing. The unpressurized flight originated at sea level and terminated at an airport with an elevation of 7,200 feet. The ski lodge was located at just over 9,000 feet MSL. After arrival, the airmen exercised in the lodge's fitness room, stayed up late, and rested for about four or five hours. In the morning, he worked out for another hour and then enjoyed a day of skiing with several excursions to the summit. The next day, the pilot awoke feeling extraordinarily tired with no appetite. He also complained of shortness of breath and decided to skip the second day of skiing. Throughout the day, he became progressively weak and lethargic. When his friends returned to check on him, he was obviously having difficulty breathing and looked cyanotic. One of his friends, an aeromedical examiner, insisted that they call for an ambulance. The ambulance transferred the pilot to a local clinic on 100% oxygen, where examination revealed pulmonary rawls, dysarthria, and ataxia. Pulse oximetry showed his PaO2 was only 45 milligrams of mercury on room air. Arrangements were made to transfer the pilot to a medical center at lower altitude where the neurologist noted progressive disorientation and papilledema. A brain CT revealed a decreased volume of the ventricles. He was treated with high-flow oxygen and dexamethasone. He recovered fully over the next three or four days. Welcome to Aerospace Medicine Grand Rounds. Speaking about this case today, we have Dr. Roger Bisson from the Civil Aerospace Medical Institute. Please welcome Dr. Bisson. This airman was very lucky. Had he lost consciousness at altitude, or if treatment was delayed, he probably would have died within 6 to 12 hours. Altitude-induced illness is caused by a rapid ascent to a high altitude. Common symptoms include headache, general malaise, fever, weakness, dizziness, and lethargy. Physical findings can vary, but may include cyanosis, pallor, periorbital edema, and tachycardia. High-altitude pulmonary edema occurs in unacclimatized individuals who ascend rapidly and engage in physical activity. The physical exam will reveal gurgling sounds in the lungs, and the individuals are often coughing up large amounts of fluid. A chest x-ray will show patchy infiltrates starting at the bases and maybe up into the middle of the lungs, but the apices are generally clear and the cardiac silhouette should be normal. The very low arterial oxygen explains why the individual is so mentally obtunded. A fundoscopic exam will reveal retinal hemorrhages. Uh, immediate treatment is 100% oxygen, and this needs to be by high flow mask at at least six to eight liters per minute, and a non-rebreather mask if, if possible. And of course, you want to bring the individual down to a lower altitude. In addition to high-altitude pulmonary edema, this individual seems to have had some high-altitude cerebral edema as well, so the prompt administration of dexamethasone to relieve cranial swelling was very important. Does anyone have any questions? Why did they not treat him in the hyperbaric chamber? I don't know why they didn't treat him in a hyperbaric chamber. Perhaps they didn't have a monoplace chamber available, or it was too far to get to a multiplace chamber. Treatment in a hyperbaric chamber would have been very useful in this man's recovery. Any other questions? If the pilot has no neurologic or other residual effects, when should he be permitted to fly again? It probably would be prudent to not fly for a couple weeks following an incident like this. A special issuance, however, is not required unless there is a neurologic residual had to compress a lot of information for a very short presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.